all right so today we look at the secant method it is similar to our earlier methods we start with an interval a b such that the function changes sign within this interval similar to the last method the false position method what we do is we get we uh, okay what we do is we take the value of the function at a and then we take the value of the function at b let me redraw this we take the value of the function at b and we join them using a straight line so this is similar to what we were doing in regular position method the point where the line intersects the x axis we call that point to be c and uh, now what we do is we take uh, the we check whether the root does in fact lie at c so we take we check the value of c uh, and see if it is equal to 0 okay so what we did in the false position method was after getting the point c we checked whether the root now lies in the interval ac or cb the way we do that is we find the value of the function at a find the value of the function at c and also at b we take the product f of a times f of c and check if it is negative if it is as in this case this means that uh, the function uh, the root of the function lies in this interval okay what the difference here is that uh, okay now what we do in uh, still in the false position method once we get to know that the root does lie in the interval ac we replace the value of c with b right c with b so that's a new b and that is our new interval in which we check for the value what we do in the secant method is okay this is secant method now what we do here is we get the value at this point which is c we get the value of the function at the point which is c and then we update we don't check for we don't check for the interval in which the sign changes that's the main difference between the false position method and the secant method in the false position method after calculating c we check we want to figure out or we check which interval in which interval the sign changes so in the false position method we came to the conclusion that in the interval ac the sign changes so we we replaced c with b but in the secant method we are not going to do that we don't have to do that so that's one step less what we do is we just simply update the values by updating what what i mean is so i remove a I need to rename B as A and I rename C as B, and this is my new interval. So now I draw a line connecting the value, connecting the value of the function at A and B. So let me draw that line. So this is a line which connects the value of the function at A and B, and it crosses the x-axis at C. So now that I have got C, I update the values. I don't look for the interval in which the sign changes. That step is not there anymore. I rename my values. I update them. So A goes away. I rename B as A and C as B. All right. Then I join a line connecting the function, the value of the function at A and B. So the value of the function at the value of the function at B is this, and I connect it. with the value of the function at a which is this and now this is my new c one more step we can do one more step right let me zoom it we can do one more step um so now we have a b and c so what i do is i remove a i rename b as a and c as b now i need to join the point now i need to join uh, now i need to connect the value of the function at a which is this and the value of the function at b which is which will be this right i need to connect them using a straight line a straight line so i connect the values of the function at a and b using a straight line and now i get a value which is here right this value is very close to the root and if i carry out one or two more iterations then 
I'll get to the real value of the root. Right. So this is uh, this is quite an interesting method in which, and it is simpler in uh, in the case uh, because we don't we are not looking for the interval in which the sign changes. We simply take the values and update the interval at each step. And how do you find out? Uh, I think this is already discussed. How do you find out the value of c? C is a point which uh, which is obtained. Uh, so how do we get c? Okay. So when we uh, join a line connecting two values and uh, we look at the point where that line crosses the x-axis that is our point c so first we need an equation for a line and the equation for a line if for example if this was uh, if this is f of a and this is f of b the equation for this line would be f of b minus f of a b minus a equals y minus y1 so y minus y1 is f of a x minus x1 so x minus x1 which is a right and i can write this as f of b minus f of a b minus a and this is y uh, so on the x axis y is 0 so y what i have left is this and on the x axis a on the x axis x is equal to c so c minus a all right then uh, i can uh, rewrite this in terms of uh, i can rewrite this in terms of uh, c so when i do that i'll have c equals f of uh, b times a minus b times f of a divided by b minus a this derivation was already done in the previous lecture so you can look at that if you want and uh, now we'll go head over to octave and write the code for this function this is f of b minus f of a okay now let's head over to octave so let me create a file with the name uh, secant okay i forgot to tell you why this is called the secant method because we're always drawing secants you know what secant is right it's the it's the opposite of a tangent a tangent passes through a single line a secant passes through two lines so it basically gives you the rate of the average rate of change between two points so the name uh, the name is secant method because we are drawing secants every, at every uh, step of the algorithm so that is why it is a secant method now let's write a code for this secant uh, all right i'll name it secant itself okay we'll be using the same function so that we can compare the results which was 4 times log x minus okay we are going to plot it and check how the function looks like and where the root of the function lies let me plot it between 0 to 20 and also set the get the current axis gcm means get current axis and in that current axis change the x axis location to origin okay fine um, now what do we do so what we can do is uh, we need to write the value of uh, we need to define the interval first so let me take a as 1 and b as 6 and now we need to calculate c which is f of b times a so a times f of b sorry minus b times f of a the whole thing divided by f of b minus f of a so this is the value of c now i divide i need to define a tolerance and a while loop which checks the value of the function at the absolute value of the function at the point c and it checks whether it is zero but since it cannot check for zero because that would take uh, you know a zero is not really defined a, re a zero cannot really be calculated by octave only a very small value can be cal calculated so it checks if that function has a very small value at c if it does not if it is greater than that small value then it keeps on running the loop so while this condition is true it runs whatever is, in is inside this loop so what do we do okay so let's get back here 
uh, this may be confusing let me just get rid of all the things that I have done let's get back to the first one so what do we do we uh, we assign a value of a we assign a value of b and then we get c and once we have got c we replace b with a and c with we replace c with b right so that is what we need to do so we have given a value of a given a value of b calculated c right now we check if whether at this c the root lies no it does not so what do we do we replace b with a and c with b so there is no need to check whether the sign is changing within the interval we simply assign the value of b to a and the value of c to b that is all we need to do and again calculate the value of c within that interval so i can do that let me just copy paste this line let's go up okay copy this line let's go down paste this line okay and then keep on repeating till we eventually get to the correct value of the root so let's see if this works let me open up octave call the secant and check c so again i want to check in the figure whether this is the correct value so i plot c and f of c with a red cross and this in fact is the root so this was the secant method let me let's look at the code again and as you can see if i want to count um, the number of steps taken to reach the root i can initialize a variable with the name counter and increment it every time the loop is run so let me run secant again and check how many times the loop ran okay, it only ran 7 times to get to the value of the root which is 8.6132 alright so this is how the secant method works I hope you understood how this method uh, is better than the regular position method so you can I'll, I'll be uploading this code on github and you can download it and play around it with play uh, play with it i mean change the values and or you can change the function write some other function and see if you are able to get the root or not so thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one thank you